Destiny. All right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Pixelated Perception. Today, we're joined by a few special friends, along with the usual. It's me, James, followed by Rodney. Hello there. Denzel. A.K.A. Big Cap. A.K.A. also on the map. Oh, well, I fucking got <laughs> <laughs> We got a Lerone. Hey, what's up? We got Eric, special guest. What's happening? And we got our at last, but certainly not least, we got Inyasha. What's up? All right. So, um, thank you everyone for tuning in last week. If you listened, that was cool. That's super awesome to see. I'm glad somebody's interested in listening to our dumb butts talk for an hour and a half. But <laughs> uh, this week we're probably going to keep it about the same. Just talk about what's going on to start off, and then we're gonna get into some uh, some juicy news articles. So, uh, I guess I'll kick it off again here. Actually, no, I think I kicked it off last week. Let's start with Rodney this week. What you've been playing? What you're doing? How's it Boy, going? I have been all over the place. It's it's going it's it's going well. I'm trying to get my life together. <laughs> it's working out all right. Right. That shit ain't for me, bro. <laughs> but uh. I've actually been playing, like, I've been playing, like, three different things. Uh, Monster Hunter Sunbreak just dropped uh, last week. On the PlayStation, that. right? Yes, on the PlayStation. I've also picked up uh, Ratchet & Clank, Rift Apart, and Death Stranding, so I'm a little what? all over the place. Okay, okay. Uh, mm. It's mm. been a very interesting mix. <laughs> I'll say that much. Very interesting. The Yokozuna doesn't fail, though. I, I love <laughs> Death Stranding's atmosphere. It's just, mm, it's just chef's kiss. How God, deep do you end up getting like into this. Death Stranding? I uh, haven't gotten that far yet, because uh, the OCD kicked in, and I saw a bunch of shit on the ground, and I immediately began to collect it oh, all no. and return it back to God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, so God. I quickly realized that I would have to curb that if I ever wanted to finish that game. So there's that. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of collecting in the Delivery Man game, that's for sure. Yeah. But, um, I played it when it came out, I don't know, come out like 2019 or something like that, I think? Yeah, right before the uh, pandemic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think people were playing Man, it into the pandemic yeah, because they were, yeah, they were talking about how, like, crazy similar the situation ended up being compared to, like, your job in the game, like, having to go and deliver everything to people who just stay inside all the time. Yep. Um, yeah. Hideo, Hideo got it. Hideo, Hideo dude, he's future. been predicting the future since he's been making games, pretty much. Like, Metal Gear Solid is literally just a plethora of memes of stuff that's actually happening now. Like, it's kind of scary. <laughs> Very scary. <laughs> he's a time traveler. He just really understands the Culture. lack of <laughs> knowledge yeah i, just, I think it really is just culture dude because he loves he loves movies so much he loves games i'm assuming he loves music and i think he really understands you know the nature of those things where they come from how they're made who makes them and like why they're and made they which can lead us to as a society yeah and he's so he just gets it man it's like he's a once in a lifetime dude you play a hideo kojima game you instantly know <laughs> from the yeah. um from the constant know. title credits that be uh, popping up. I mean yeah, the everything from the way it <laughs> flows to the characters to how everybody is presented to just the little little things you might notice in the background, the overall environment. Attention to detail, yeah. It's yeah, him and his crew of dudes have been killing it ever since they came out. It's strangely like cinematic. Years, yeah? Thirty plus? Yeah, very cinematic all the time. He loves, and it's clear he loves movies. And mm. I wish more people made games like him. Honestly, watching stuff be presented, like I know a lot of people gave him stuff for like it's more of a movie than a game. Like especially when Metal Gear Solid Four came out, it was like yeah. pretty much all cuts. Like it was a majority cutscenes. I'm not gonna say it was all cutscenes, but wasn't it like four or five hours worth? Of it games? was a long. It was a lot, but it's crazy. Yeah, you can skip them. Like and it never felt like it, yeah, when you were playing it. Like, I played that game a lot, and... Yeah, I did, too. <laughs> there was multiple times where I would just sit and watch those cutscenes through, you know, maybe it's partly because 
because of nostalgia from playing the originals. There was a lot of nostalgia in that game, like flashbacks and stuff. Maybe it was, it was just because of how entertaining the cutscenes were. Honestly, they were just really well shot, well presented, always well voice acted. Like it was just sick. Good shit. Yeah, Death Stranding is. It lacks the action gameplay, I would say, of Metal Gear, but it definitely has the story. It's got the heart of what Kojima does, and I think that's what makes it definitely worth playing. So I'm excited to see how you think of it, what you think of it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be working on that. that Anyone else uh, touch that stranding? I started it. it. You started it, Eric? What is, how far did you get? Uh, not very far. I think I got up to the point where you finally get the baby, and then all the weird stuff starts happening. Like, I think I jump scared myself a couple times <laughs> with, with you know, black moves was rising up, and I didn't know what was going on. And I thought you could, like, sit on a platform for, like, a couple minutes before stuff starts popping off, and then somebody knocked me off, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Let me start this over. Yeah, they want you to. Sneak through the scary dudes, but um, yeah, I think you should give it a shot too. I think the story is super cool. Probably find it interesting. But um, what else was on your list, Rodney? Oh, uh, Ratchet and Clink. Rift Ratchet apartment. and Clink. It's about time, buddy. Yeah, it's about time, off. buddy. <laughs> anyway, I booted it up because I'm like, I bought that literally the same time I bought uh the director's cut of Death Stranding. And I yeah. was like, you know what? I've been just trying to get back into gaming. Is not so much a social thing, just something that I like to do in my spare time. Because mm -hmm. with all the co-op and MMORPG and all of that shit, it kind of becomes a group effort. And when your schedules don't align, a lot of that shit is just unplayable. Because mm. it's not the same when you play yeah. it by yourself. So yeah. I wanted yeah. to pick up some stuff that I could yeah. play when no one else was on. You know, with the two that I picked, they are definitely Ratchet and Clank. Legitimately made me chuckle and smile just playing it. I appreciate that. It's a great. Some of the stuff was actually funny. Yeah. yeah. Did you play the original? Oh yeah. I re uh, played. Uh, I want to say I played most of them. I think the last one I played was on the. The last one I played to completion was. I guess it'd have to be PS3 when the original, like when they released the like the reboot or whatever for it. Yeah, and then with the, the movie uh, out too, I remember that little expansion, uh, Quest for Booty, which was actually really fun as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, saw booty, I saw booty on the title, and it was pretty much a done deal. Good, uh, it, it hey, the now the culture. <laughs> Man, but yeah, it was actually really DJ. good. Like playing that, it made me really want to like, I, like I couldn't wait for the next Ratchet and Clank game. That's cool, man. I played. I tried to play Fallen Order, but I, I just couldn't bring myself to continue. Wow. Maybe one day. Like the story is really good. It's just I did not care for the gameplay or the progression of the game. But, yeah. Uh, I tried playing. That's um... wild. No, I, mean, I didn't try. I played. The Ratchet and Clank's on the PS2. Like, I think I played Going Commando and uh, Up Your Arsenal, I think it was that called. Was my game. Yeah. I, I thought those were pretty Arsenal. cool. But I never I played... had the same connection. Go ahead, Eric. I was going to say, Up Your Arsenal, I played that game 26 times. I played Jesus. that game yeah, right? very much. <laughs> That All I right. knew Yo, word, games word for word. I just loved the gameplay. I loved oh, wow. the characters. There was just something about that game specifically that I just enjoyed so much that I couldn't get tired of it. There's mm, one just, you just no messed with it. Has. It was the perfect game at the right time. Yeah. Because I feel like everybody has that one game where they can Definitely. play just mm -hmm. back to back to back to back and it never gets boring. What would that game be for you all? Oh, we. Ooh. Ooh. So, <laughs> one. Easily. I just, yeah. I just, yeah. I just booted up a Sona 4 for like the 11th time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Go, go to those trenches again. 
League of Legends, and y'all should throw in a oh, couple of people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 the long, oh, long fan of that. Right. That's alright, we don't judge, but, you know, the internet may may judge heavily. We'll see. Hey, as long as you um, enjoy it, that's all that matters. Yeah, if you enjoy hey. it, it makes you happy, and that's good. That's that's all we're Live the asking. life you want to live? Mm-hmm. I don't your think I really have so one. I really don't think I have one. Like, I ha I can't... For me, once I beat a game, it's like like I don't want to go through it again. You know what I mean? Like, there's very few things that I can like continuously just play over and over again, and I just don't get super bored. Um, the only game that I've probably beaten multiple times was like the original Red Dead, and that's because that shit kept corrupting on my fucking memory card. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I know I, I got through that game me, at right? least. Yeah, Red Dead Revolver. Like I probably got through that game or like beat a chunk of it at least six seven times because it literally kept corrupting before i could beat the game that sucks i never heard of yeah, that but... yeah, it's super bad back then but the only other game that i could say that i actually beat back to back like and i just thought it was an amazing fucking game was like final fantasy 7 remake absolutely that game was fantastic honestly yeah. uh I feel like the game that I've replayed the most, bar none, would probably be Metal Gear Solid 4. Yeah, I mean, numerically, I, I think... That shit at least... I want to say an upwards of 12-plus times? Yeah. I went back, because uh, I was going to come to learn about me, podcast listeners. I am a trophy person, for some reason. I like getting my trophy hunter. You're a trophy hunter, You're a trophy hunter bro. <laughs> We're just saying, I like to achieve my hunter. goals that I put out there, and one of the goals was the platinum, um, platinum, which is the like get all the trophies in a game in a PlayStation game after a certain period because it wasn't in the games originally, like on PS3, and obviously before that. But since Metal Gear Solid 4 came out before they had trophies, they actually went back and added trophies to it, and it was quite an undertaking. Uh, platinum that game, maybe playing a lot, but I definitely loved it. But I'm definitely still gonna go to Mass Effect One, just mm-hmm. because Mass Effect One to me was. <clears throat> I played really good games before that. I played really good story games before that. But being able to see like a create a character, my character, that you develop and have a like a fully voice person behind, actually develop and change in a world and have all the stuff for you to go around and explore and do. Absolutely changed my outlook of video games. I easily my favorite game of all time. It was just magical to see that stuff happen. Mm. I think it's between that and Skyrim for me, because y'all know I was playing Skyrim on the PlayStation Four for years when we were going through those slumps of new <laughs> games. Always just Bro, always go back to Skyrim. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is crazy too because it's not the PC version, which adds <laughs> With the mods, yeah. hours Bruh. and hours of gameplay. I'm playing I guess. Space PS4. Hours on it. <laughs> like, Bro, we're not even going to talk about Laron dubious self in that <laughs> game. Hey, bro. We got 1,400 hours on Skyrim, bro. Don't judge me. That's not even that many, honestly. No, no, on that version. No, 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 on that version. On that I still got the version. PS3. PS4. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I can do it, bro. Version. I, I got that game multiple times. <laughs> I bought that specifically on the 360 because I was like, this game is going to be butt on the PS3. And it, sure enough, it was <laughs> butt was. on the PS3. Oh, yeah. That was the first time in the game I ever a death loop. Like, I got saved in the middle oh, of you, burning oh, a you got, you got, like, soft uh, Oh, yeah. Oh. I uh, like I lowered to a cave and burned to death. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never no. forget when I got it auto saved me mid fall and fall out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And that was before I made multiple saves because I was a fucking idiot. And I'm like, oh, I ain't playing this shit no more. <laughs> Damn. Playing. See, these. I kind of want to go back. Absolutely, I have to go back, and you have to like, we have to watch. Like that's oh, Skyrim. Right. Skyrim to me. It was very special just because, like, watching Morrowind, watching Oblivion, and watching those games progress so much every yeah. time them came out, and that trailer hits, and it's it was freaking magical, dude. It felt like 
they did everything you wanted them to do. They made the combat better, which I know now it's like a joke. But at the time, it was such an improvement <laughs> over the previous <laughs> game. Yes. Like, oh my they, god! Uh, they yes. simplified the leveling, which I know some people didn't like, but like I didn't mind it. I thought it was cool. You still had the basic concept of the Elder Scrolls leveling system behind it. And the most important part, which and to me in every Elder Scrolls game, is the world. And the world was phenomenal. There's mm-hmm. probably still nothing like Skyrim just to go around and explore. There's stuff everywhere. It's so immersive. It's nuts. Playing that one in the weekend the other it came game, out, bro. Rearfall. <laughs> bro, stop oh. it. We'll, we'll stop get to that. It. We can, we'll we can talk about Rearfall later. That's a whole different thing. Damn. <laughs> um, all right, back to the topic at hand here, Roddy. You were also playing Monster Hunter, you said? That was the last game? Yes. How's that going? Sunbreak just came so out on PlayStation. Quick to, uh... Monster Hunter is always one of them games where you can literally just pick it up, do something for, like, 20 minutes, feel accomplished, and then just hop off and do something else. <laughs> Great bite-sized but, um, game, man. Yeah, Sunbreak is a huge improvement over uh, Rise as a whole, just from mechanics to monsters to just the flow of the game is a lot smoother. It's a lot more streamlined. It's a lot easier and a lot more, I don't know if forgiving is the right word, but you definitely have more tools at your disposal to keep from getting, uh, and back to camp. Yeah. Yeah. Card it. Yeah. One shot. Yeah. Yeah, Like, Played it a little bit. I haven't been one shot by anything yet, which is huge yeah. plus. It's, that shit's not fun. But uh, yeah, it's just, all in all, I definitely give it like a so far like a eight, eight out of. What 10. would you give Rise in comparison? Six. Yeah, it's a pretty significant improvement. I was playing <laughs> Rise with you when it came out. I liked it at first, but I definitely felt like, especially coming out from World, it felt like it was missing a lot. That yeah. I would have hoped would have carried over. It didn't I understand have that it. sheen, that polish. It didn't have the sheen, didn't have the polish, and it really felt like it was missing, um, like some of the fun of Monster Hunter. Like I felt like I was not really able to get the things I wanted with the, any type of realistic timeline. Like we got stuck in like the Nargakuga like, Medulla. Like <laughs> yeah, like it was so ridiculous. Like. Uh, I understand old Monster Hunter games were really brutal, but I feel like they passed that with World, and they realized they didn't need to do that anymore, and they felt like they kind of went back with it on it a little bit, and it was very, it was felt like it was worse going back than it was originally experience, experiencing that. That's fair. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that's improved. That's cool. Um, yeah. Next up here on the list, though, Eric, what you've been playing, what you've been doing? Oh boy! So I took my first foray, foray into horror games with Resident Evil Four. What? Y'all saw us play through. Boy, <laughs> there are just some parts of that game where I wanted to quit, but then you and Lerone watched out and nope, gotta do it. Oh yeah, yeah. you can't yeah. get a punch <laughs> fun, the homie. <laughs> oh my gosh! What are those called? The uh, not the violators. What are those things called? The one, the regenerators. The violators. The violators. violators. My it was God. The violator the bad thing from Spawn? Uh... Yeah. That's sick. What a <laughs> Not out to anybody who's old enough to know what the hell that is, but, um... <laughs> yeah. The Garridors? What were you talking about? Or are you talking the regenerators? Regenerators. Talking regenerators. About the regenerators, yeah. yeah. Regenerators. Yeah, we we talked a lot about... Them. Talked a lot about Resident Evil 4 on the previous podcast, but... I don't think we had any like brand new new people playing it. So, the brand new to Resident Evil, brand new to horror games like that. I've always watched people play horror games, but that never was my kind of thing. But then just looking at the gameplay of Resident Evil Four, I was like, all right, I guess I could try it. Like I knew the moment where I shot one of the villagers' heads off, and like blood was going mm. everywhere. I was like, all right, I think I'll try this. <laughs> oh, the action, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Murder, you know. I think the run, action run in by the action. Out. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's cool, man. I mean, Resident Evil Four. That was—I don't know if that was the intention of the original release of Resident Evil Four, 
but it's definitely the result of Resident Evil 4, bringing the action to the forefront and it being so good in terms of like gameplay. It definitely introduced a lot more people into it. Definitely is a reason why Resident Evil is still around today. Like, I'm sh- maybe it oh, would have yeah. been like maybe it would still be like a niche title, but it wouldn't be the. I feel like it's a household name at this point. It's probably also partly because of the movies, but mm-hmm. the games also being successful along with them definitely helped. Mm. Yeah. Um. So, like, what was your favorite part of the game? I think Eric? the castle, when you first storm the castle and then the giants are throwing the boulders at you, even though it's very <laughs> chaotic. Oh, you got smacked. I was I was smacked. Mm. <laughs> I would just turn around just get smacked with the rock. I think it's just the chaos of it and then kind of I don't know, having that break from the horror element where kind of realizing there's something bigger going on in Resident Evil more than just like you sneaking around and like fighting zombies like no this is like an entire landscape and it's just you versus these dudes and trying to figure out why they're after this girl specifically so could you say that you realize that you were in a residency of evil (laughs) oh Oh, no oh no (laughs) Uh, ain't no way bro y'all gonna let him cook bro stop it (laughs) Skillet always been up for you to sell. Skillet is up. Oh, oh god. Rangely Continuing. Enough, this game kind of makes me want to go through the other other Resident Evils and cool. play those as well. Yeah, I mean, they're a freaking roller coaster. Resident Evil goes up and down a lot. Unfortunately, you can actually play Resident Evil One. On the PlayStation Five slash Four, with their little uh, extras catalog, they it, yeah? yeah, they put it on there, which is a treat. If you have never seen or played that game, anyone who's listening to this, Resident Evil One Director's Cut, I believe it's on the PlayStation like Premium or Extras thing that gives you access to the old school games. I think it's Premium, or you know, yep. of course, if you have access to the original hardware, that's always cool. Or you know, other illicit means of playing the original hardware. Wink, 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 wink. Um, oh no! <laughs> oh, I made it. <laughs> that game is very special. Resident Evil Two, people loved. That's why they remade it. It's a big fanfare. Resident Evil Three, the original, probably my favorite of the originals. Absolutely endearing game and a very tense structure. And you know Resident Evil Four, probably no Resident Evil Five. Mm-hmm. And Resident Evil 6 is the first of the big... I mean, there's also Code Ver- There's a lot of games. We're not going to go into it. There's a lot of games. I hope you enjoy that ride. They're very fun. They're very interesting. And there's a lot of cool people that cover them. The epitome of peaks and valleys to a T. Yeah. Uh, you play anything else? I beat the Forbidden West DLC. Word? Yeah. It was fire? <laughs> That game, especially DLC, makes me so mad how good it looks. Like, just for... <laughs> it makes you mad? Yes, because <laughs> I, 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 I would literally walk through certain parts of the map and be like, what the fuck? Like, why is this... Get <laughs> 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 traded by the god race. <laughs> like, it's insane. Like, it's between... <laughs> like, <laughs> Bidden West and Ghost of Tsushima for me. Like, what they've Ooh, been able to pull so out pretty. of the PS5. Just in the That's short a PS4 amount of time. Game. No, the DLC. No, Forbidden just... West. Yeah, yeah, Ghost of Tsushima. I mean, oh, I but mean, yeah, the, the yeah. doesn't make sense to me. That game loaded yeah, in like it, two no seconds on PS4. Reason it should be that good. If they, they, they pulled some witchcraft on that one, G. Yeah. Not even a lot of it. Very, very intelligently crafted in the game, right there. That, that was. And very it impressive. ran so buttery Perfect. smooth. Yeah. Perfect theme. Forbidden Perfect. West is like that too. And yeah. the last boss of that the game DLC or the main game? of the DLC, it reminded me of Jack Three. Really? Way. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. Like That's that boss fight. Yeah. When I was playing, I was just like, "Dang, this looks kind of familiar." Where do I know this from? And I just That's awesome. 
I think the DLC was better than the base game. Word? I gotta wow. get to it. I've been really slogging on, like, beating Forbidden West. Great mm-hmm. game. Love it. Beat the first one. Uh, plan on beating this one, but, like, it came out at a bad time. I ended up playing it. That's why you've been picking at it for, like, a long time now, right, Drew? Bro, it's like, you know, you know when you have some good food, right? But you already kind of full, so you end up not finishing it that same day. And you just kind of eat away at it for the next couple days. That's how I, mean, I look at that like game. Half a year by the- <laughs> I mean, hey, look, that's that's what I got for you, bro. I mean, I really know I need to beat it. I just, like, I just have not felt the, the desire to really sit down and focus on it. But it's good. Like, I don't know why. It's, it's good. All right, did you play the uh, original? I did play the original. I'm assuming you I enjoyed th- that in the DLC. Yeah, I think the story for the first one is a little bit better than the second one. And okay. then I played through the first one again before Forbidden West came out because they came out with the uh, 60 FPS update for it, which mm. makes it look even more beautiful than it already was. And I think it's so interesting how that game came to be because PlayStation didn't have faith in it to begin with. Originally, really? they uh, they didn't think that Aloy as a character and having her as a cover of the game wouldn't sell a lot of units. Yeah. That's a different Watch me fooling that. them wrong. Yeah. Definitely. I think just... it's I'm excited to see what they're going to do with the series now that doing the DLC and then kind of looking at it as a whole from the first game to the second game. Oh, they are already looking at it as a um, as a pretty good like you know first party title from them because they decided to put that aside alongside the uh, PlayStation VR two when it launched. Mm. They felt like that was a good enough game to be a system seller. Was it? Probably not. But they felt like it was strong enough. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think it was definitely. It's got a decent budget behind it. It's pretty well made. It's got a good developer behind it. I think it would have been more strange that it did not sell than if it did. I think there's an MMO well, coming out for it too. An MMO, that's interesting. Yeah, they got the MMO coming out and then they're working on the um the uh they're working on the um what, the last of us one as well? Yeah, The Last of Us was supposed to have a multiplayer game, I believe, coming out like a standalone multiplayer game based off of the Factions multiplayer from the original Last of Us on the PS3 release, which I was a big fan of. I thought it was fantastic. Due to its simplicity and well-done execution. I feel like I'd be more of a fan of it now than I was back then. Mm. Of what? Of the uh, multiplayer of uh, Last of Us, man, I really care I'm for it so... when it came out. But then again, I was playing against uh, people who knew full well how to abuse certain things, and boy, mm. did it not feel good to get a <laughs> smoke bomb and then shaved in the neck every time yeah, I was I... on. So. <laughs> no, no, hey, it was... man, it was great though, man. I, I can't wait to see what they oh. do with factions. For me, when I was sipping your ass, <laughs> yeah, man, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you was like, thanks. I wasn't I wasn't even talking about all, you bro. with that list but I, hey you added to that list we one of the problems I mean they yeah. expanded upon that game's balance through DLC which is a whole topic in of itself which I think did not make it better in any way shape Didn't or form but I think the base game that they had was excellent super fun and yeah. I am interested in that but yeah Horizon I played the original I thought it was super good I loved the beginning of that game the very beginning of the first one, where you uh, you're like in the kind of teenage camp, uh, transferring to like adulthood ceremony thing they had going on, mm. and there's a scene where like you get attacked by the scary robot people, mm. and you like rip a machine gun, like the chick, the main character, yeah. like rips a machine gun off of like one of them, and just starts like uh, ramboing down people, and it's a super cool <laughs> scene. It was like, wow, that was really awesome. The rest of the game is pretty 
pretty good as well, but that, that really stuck with me. That was awesome. So I'm glad to hear the second game's doing pretty good. I haven't gotten around to playing it just because I'm, you know, pretty busy with stuff right now, but I definitely want to. Definitely want to check out the DLC too. Good to hear that's awesome. Have you been touching anything else? I've been trying to go through Jedi Survivor, fucking going to Jedi <laughs> Fall <laughs> Order. Because June, that's going to be pretty packed month, I think, for oh, yeah. all of us. Oh, man. Because it's literally just back to back to back. <laughs> so I want to get through those two. Yeah, for the first that. time in a long time, the summer of gaming is going to be not dead. Wild. But there is no E3, which is crazy. No E3, yeah, isn't but that you got weird? got the summer game show. Yeah, we have the other E3, so that is hopefully is cool. But, um, yeah, Jedi Survivor, what do you think of it? You know, because I've also been kind of, like, dipping into Souls-like. I'm not sure if... Would Jedi Survivor be considered... Yeah, so yeah, it was. It's, it's like the first yeah. game, definitely. Mm. So I've been kind of dipping into that as well, and I don't know. I think I just have to learn like patience and parrying, like you guys try to drill into me often. Oh yeah, for it's sure. It's a pretty good game. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I love drilling, Eric, you know we have to <laughs> oh, move on. Oh god, Jesus! To move on from our <laughs> setting <laughs> and rise up and evolve as gamers evolve become better but i will say i do think i like the first game i like the story it's very jank the combat in the game is a very jank and i'm I'm not gonna say it's the best i'm not gonna say it's good as any souls game honestly i think there's a lot of strange animation cycles animation loops whatever you say animation transitions that make it look very awkward um, mm. I don't think any particular... There's some enemies that make you have to think about what you're doing more than others. Sure, but a lot of the time it does just evolve into do I parry that or do I dodge that? Mm. So I'm assuming the second game has a little bit more going on. Slightly. Yeah. Just slightly. Is the story uh, still good, I'm assuming? For the second one, yeah, it's been really, uh, really interesting. I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna tie it all into um, the the Mandoverse, the Mandalorian verse. Really, that's cool. Yeah, Cal Kestis is gonna be, to my knowledge, he's gonna be like a real character um, in the the overall universe. The like because the events of Jedi Survivor is happening at the same time that the Obi Wan um, Disney Plus show was taking place. Hmm. So, it's pretty That's interesting. Cool. I'm I'm interested in seeing good Star Wars stuff. I definitely have always liked Star Wars. Never loved it except for some small iterations here and there. But I've definitely always been interested, and it's always disheartening to see it not do well. Yeah, it was so. definitely a cool IP. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's a legendary one. But you know, yeah. just legendary IPs get hijacked and don't know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Mismanaged is an understatement. Yeah. It's like these people want to drive it into the fucking ground. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. Predator into the ground. Star Wars <laughs> into the ground. Jurassic Park into the ground. Hey, 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 hey. Don't, don't come for a drink. No, 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 no. I didn't hate Calm the new one. The movies was awful. Enjoyable when you turn your brain off. Awful as Jurassic Park movies. Oh I haven't God, seen the either. second uh, one, the third one, the new ones, but I saw the original, or the first new one. Like it was called Jurassic World. First new one was mm-hmm. alright. I th- I thought that movie was pretty cool. I love the end of that movie. I like that one. Oh I, mean, I didn't see the third one. I don't that think. Sucks. That sucks to hear. But I implore you all to watch the second one and the third one. Just sounds <laughs> just like to say that you have. It'll sounds like funny. something fun to watch together. We could do a group watch. Yeah, that'd be that'd perhaps be do a, a little yes, reaction would. thing. If anyone's interested about it, listening to this, watch be sure too. to let me know. Hey, I'm down for whatever. That, uh, that newest Predator movie because that shit was absolute. Yeah, fucking all garbage. everyone in here is a fan of yes movies so bad that they're good. So. <laughs> I just know if that's yeah, interesting. That's true. 
That's the yeah, thing, case, baby. We watched Cowboy Beep up together, oh, guys. Oh, no, 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 bro, that could have been a great series, dude. I the tears, and it wasn't oh, the anime. Oh, yeah. Tears, sad. No, 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 the the anime was cool. The Netflix? Nah, dude. I think I was done when I saw a tree dripping come out. <laughs> oh, that needs the, what? What? You need to calm that down. Y'all don't remember that shit? I don't want to remember that. Was that in the well, it's, it's, it's just unfortunate it. because I have a very good memory for the worst things. That is unfortunate. And yes. I do remember that. Now you say it. I do remember oh. that. That was a key plot point for somebody like escaping or something, right? Yeah. It was. Oh. Oh, no. we'll, we'll talk about we'll talk about that at some point at a later let's, uh, date. At a later date. Let's uh let's continue here. Anything else, Eric? I think those are the big ones for me right now. Just getting through that and then prepping my wallet for June. Yes, June's yeah. gonna be super cool. Star saving now. Um, it's gonna be rough. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I think uh, I can make a decent amount of money now. <laughs> next up on the list here, Denzel. What you been up to? Oh well, really, it's been like two main games. Um, probably the big one is Jedi Survivor, um, which I think is overall a good game. Um, and the second one would be One Piece Odyssey, which I think is. A good game for people that like One Piece. Is it out? Oh, yeah, it's been out. It came oh, out at the beginning. Man. Still. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was on sale. It was on sale for like forty-five or something on PlayStation. So I had a fifty-dollar so, card. I'm over here waiting. For, uh, you telling me it's not only been out but long enough to sell? Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's on sale, man. So if you were, if you were interested, you grab well it. Go and get that. I will grab it. I will. <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna lie though. Hey, as a man of culture, I appreciate what they did. I appreciate them looking out for us, man. Oh, so you're free, man. Oh, no, we gotta get my Play yourself. the game. Play the game. <laughs> I'm talking about immediately. I appreciate them looking out for us. I appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate Oda, bro. Oda, Chef's Kiss. You, you, you do a great job. You, you, you truly are a man now of the culture. Curious. This man out here. But wild and as usual, I would imagine. I do have to speak on Jedi Survivor in the state that it uh came out in. Oh, yes. I'm gonna tell you right now. Touch on that. I'm gonna tell you right fucking now. All right. Like I said, it's a good game, bro. This shit runs like hot doodle sometimes, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. There's literally been a, there was a section in this game, right? I got to a new world and I fell off and I respawned, right? I didn't die or anything. I just like, you know, you fall off and you just kind of go back to where you fell off from. The entire world was black. Everything around me was black. There was, there was no textures. There was no walls. I couldn't see anything but the character. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? So I'm like, in the dev room or I was <laughs> like, I'm like, and then like, I'm trying to get my, you know, like, because it's a Souls like game. I'm trying to get my souls back, right? And I can see the souls. There is just a black area, but I can see the souls in front of me. But I try to walk oh, towards them. There's a wall. In front of you yes, <laughs> yes. There's a wall in yeah, front of me, so I can't in. get to it, right? So like none of the texture is essentially loaded in to the game. Like nothing. Man fell through world. I'm down here already. Hey, come here often, bro. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't even falling through the world, bro. It was like I was literally on the map, but nothing loaded in. Nothing and this, loaded in. That's this wild. is just like like one of the issues I'm running into. There's a lot of issues with like the actual character models and the enemy models. Like their attacks are just way bigger than they're supposed to be. All right, so. I definitely am playing this shit on the hardest difficulty, and I shouldn't be, but I did the first one on the hardest difficulty. So it's on me, all right? It's on me. But I'm going to tell you right now, if I see a motherfucker <laughs> stick his tongue out, and it goes in a straight line, and I jump, and my legs are clearing his shit by, like, three feet, and I still get caught, that's a problem. It's a back the size of a butt. No, bro, he's with the... No, bro. <laughs> Look, bro, it's like... It's like 
they did not spend enough time polishing this game. I, I wonder if that is a bug or if that is intended Even, design. So if that's intended design, then whoever designed that shit needs to be fired because it makes no that's, fucking sense. Let's not call for anyone's firing. Hey, look. <laughs> look, look. I look, understand I'm not a... Look. All right. I believe in people doing a good job and putting out work that is respectable. And I, like I said, I think it's a good game, and I think the overall game is great. But EA, they knew what the fuck they was doing, and that shit releasing in the state they did is a mistake. You put that shit on thirty frames, feels like you're underwater. Literally can't play it in fucking thirty. Sixty frames, it plays significantly better. But boy, when I tell you some of the people's faces and some of the textures and some of the shit that you see is just garbage. Oh my god, it looks like it looks like some PS2 shit. No cap. It's this actually is on the ridiculous. PS5, right? Yeah, PS5 version. We're not even gonna right. talk about. I don't have a PC, well, but like the so PC version is he got all that. I, I mean, I'm even listening. I just linked an article from Eurogamer talking about. I mean, the title of the article says it all. It says, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is the worst AAA PC port of 2023 so far. And, you know, this year for PC ports has not been pretty. They have been, I don't know if neglected is the right word, but it certainly seems like it. Every game's coming out PC day one now is having really big technical issues. Which is article weird. Goes I mean, it's because they build the games for the consoles and try to back it up to the PC. Yeah, I just think that I think this has always been a thing, but I think that the increasing complexity of these games is just um, compounding the issue. Yeah, that's definitely not helping. And um, yeah, like the PC version was really rough, really bad technical issues. I know a patch has since come out. I think has significantly increased performance for both PC and console. But you know, I don't think it runs flawlessly still. Do I think it should be running falsely? You know, probably not. It's a AAA uh, big budget game, so it should probably be running pretty good. I understand, you know, they're very hard to make work. Video games are very technical. And they're very difficult mm-hmm. to get done. But at the end of the day, you are selling a seventy. I said it was seventy dollars, right, Denzel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a seventy dollar product, and like. It coming out in such a rough like I think if they waited for that initial patch to come out, I think people would have been less upset. Because it's pretty much the only media I've seen of this game is how bad the performance is. And when people actually do talk about the quality of the game, they say it's really good. And I think that's really unfortunate and probably very disheartening that people who actually worked on the game. Especially oh, if it could have sure. been mitigated significantly from like a patch that came that came out a week later. Yeah, for sure, dude. It's a, it's really sad when you think about the fact that a lot of games nowadays are just being released so unfinished, just to uh, get to the bottom line, um, instead of like making sure that they're like put out in the best possible state, because they're just all like, ah, we'll just finish it later. You know, it's like, it's like turning in your homework <laughs> and then while the teacher's grading it you're like hey yeah, let me finish that shit, shit. no yeah. no well, they, yeah, that shit all the time. <laughs> like they like bro you know you didn't finish like half of this shit I you forgot, just like hey let me, to let me put just my name shit in, like, to do, like three questions real quick <laughs> right, bro yeah, like that's what they're that doing shit. it's it's Get ridiculous this whole right yeah. bro oh, Pit, pretty good. much oh my god well, when you try to appease shareholders and you really don't give a fuck about, you know, the actual state that it's in. I'm sure they do. I out. just think that video games have come to the point where this stuff has been deemed acceptable. As long as it gets fixed within a certain amount of time. Last 10 years minimum. Yeah, like, it's been, it's been early 20... I'm trying to think of, like, there's been a couple games, certainly, and I think Nintendo is pretty big on releasing games that are not all their games. I think all Pokemon games have a lot of trouble, but like the Zeldas and the Metroids and the Marios that come out have been pretty much you know, rock solid on pretty release. solid on release, yeah. A bunch of PlayStation exclusives have been really solid on release. Um, for multi-platform stuff, uh, I mean, like, 
Resident Evil 4 was pretty solid. Pretty much all of Capcom stuff was pretty solid technically. Yeah. I don't remember a lot of issues. From Soft. From Soft has always had like a mediocre to above average technical performance, but it's never been like so poor that it's game breaking since like the PS3. With uh, because the PS3 was a really rough console to design around, I think. But mm-hmm. yeah, not. A, I think a lot of other games had been rough. Like I don't. I, I haven't played Harry Potter. We're gonna get into that, but I think that came out in a pretty decent shape, technically. Like yeah. 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 Um, Played really smooth. Yeah, so, I was actually surprised. I don't know what the mindset is behind that. I would love to talk to like a developer or something who or someone in charge of making that decision because I understand like. At the end of the day, the people have a vision. The vision has to come to fruition eventually. You can't keep pushing things back and whatnot. But I'm curious of what that point is. What makes them decide? Is it super based on how close they are to the vision, or is it more based on we need to get something out the door before we start, you know, taking too long and we start losing budget and stuff? Like they, at some point, they have to sit down and discuss. Like at what point? But the sales from this game being released now outweigh the mm. damage to our reputation that the mm. damage product that will bring. Yeah. It's just, I'm, like, when do they figure, like, that break even, that, that tipping point, or for, <laughs> yeah, this is good enough. Mm. I mean, shit. I don't even know if it's that every time either. Because, like, you know, I know we're going to talk about it later, but shit, they, didn't they, um, push back Redfall and that shit still came out? Like I believe they pushed it back twice, maybe? Maybe they only pushed it back once. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious what the decision there was for that. I feel like uh, developers right. now like have two different battles. So I feel like on one side, you have to appease your shareholders and everything and all the higher-ups. But on the other side, you have all the gamers that want to buy your product, and there's these two different voices coming at you and at the same time you're trying to inject your art into these games it's just mm. i don't know i feel for i would sometimes. not want to be a game developer oh, yeah, yeah man it must be rough it should probably have it's like being a manga to watch to be completely honest because it's like all the mm-hmm. shit that they have to go through and then you finally release something that you want to be proud of and literally you're getting attacked and th- threatened on all sides yeah. <laughs> And Sometimes like, you even Jesus get that far. Christ. Like, yeah, like, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't even want to deal with it. So, yeah, kudos I mean, you gotta to really, the devs that really, really love stick what you're it doing. out and love their art, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And it's like, man, like, it's not even on you. Like, you could have been just in charge of a very specific part of the game. The game comes out yeah. and it's trash. They do not take time to specify Oh no, the game you is get garbage, the don't play it, unplayable, everybody there should be fired, like all types of shit. Yeah, like and we then just the higher had. ups just blame the devs. Mm-hmm. Mm. Either directly or in a roundabout, very just disgusted way of avoidance. It's just like, oh yeah, oh, the team. Balls I do in think technically that is the case, <laughs> but like, I think this Christ. week we had a shining example against that, which we will get to after we go through everybody's stuff, but. We still yeah. haven't any Yasha, have we? Yeah, we haven't finished Denzel. Denzel. <laughs> God damn. Are you, are you, have you played anything else? Are you good? I mean, yeah, it's really just uh, One Piece and, um, and Survivor right now. Um, One Piece really is quick. good, I take it. I didn't hear anything about that game when it came out. So, I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's your typical like um, JRPG like anime game. But it is slightly better than a lot of those end up being because, let me be honest, like I I don't buy one piece games because a lot of them they, they just look garbage to me. For anyone who doesn't know what you mean by a JRPG anime game, can you give me another example? Um, like of another game. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I guess like there's a bunch of different ones like this. But I guess the ones that people might know, like there was a bunch of like Naruto games, like Naruto Uzumaki Chronicles kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, what's a, what's another one? 
Um, I think a pretty... fairy tale game came out. Oh, that Dragon Ball Z similar. Kakarot. That's the Dragon that's Ball the most Z recent Kakarot. one. Yeah. That's probably the most recent one and the most pot like um known one right now. I mean, because at the end of the day, these games are not getting like the best budget, despite the fact that they're from such big IPs. Like you know, it's kind of pretty much just advertisements for the shows. Exactly right. They're they're there to make you really watch or read what it's all about at the end of the day. Um, I usually wind up in either Cyber Connect or Koei Tecmo's uh, court to usually dish out something like you know your standard Dynasty Warriors affair, mm-hmm. Hyrule Warriors, you know, a Musho. I think that's called Fire Musho game. Yeah, or yeah, a, yeah, uh, you get that, that really RPG. nice looking. Uh, Cyber Connect games like the Storm games and uh, pretty much any like the Cyber Connect do Kakarot as well. I don't know, I'm not sure, but I also didn't play I feel it. Like they usually look really nice, but there's usually not a super large amount of depth involved. Yeah, it's really simple. Yeah, like Laron like... said, it's very much so to uh, just ooh sparkly, you know, saying so just to draw you in. Yeah, and, you know. Which I cannot look. They, they look nice. They play all right. They're not usually broken, so that's a plus. Yeah, but they're also generally just not good. A lot of them. They're very. Like if you're not a super fan of it, most of the time you're not gonna like them. Like as a normal pander, game, I feel like they just pander to very general audiences. Very, At least very specific. Specific. I'm sure they're pandering to the fans. Oh yes, anime. Yeah. Like you're not gonna buy a, a, a Muso game if you don't care about the IP. Oh, you know? I'm not buying a damn Muso game. I hate that. <laughs> hey, look, I played. I played my fair share. Infamous played it with me. There's <laughs> there's a certain level of enjoyment to there be is had. A certain level of enjoyment. It's like of really mindless dumb, acting. brainless, smooth brain type shit, but it is enjoyable to play Absolutely. in doses. I just can't even do it, Chief. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Never forget <laughs> Samurai Warriors. I swear to God. It was fun for like 25 minutes, so I will give it that. And yes. That's it. You play it for short amounts of time, you do basic combos, you kill waves of people, you play something better. Yeah. So One Piece, though, is pretty good? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I'll put it, like, maybe one or two steps above, like, you know, like we were talking about earlier, like, the basic JRPG, average, like, advertisement games. game, yeah. I mean, it looks really good. I mean, it has, at the core, it's, uh, it's a turn-based RPG, which is the main reason I got it, because I'm like, it's hard to mess up a turn-based RPG. Like, all you have to do is make good animations, have a good story, and you can pretty much... Yeah, like everything else kind of just flows with that. So I will say those are both there. Um, but thus far, it's just been a little bit dragging because I've been in the tutorial area. So I just got out of that and headed into like the first part of the actual game. Um, but, you know, it's overall been been really enjoyable so far. And the animations do look really good. It's really cool to see all of the attacks that um, they have from the anime, and hopefully I'll see some uh, some really cool stuff towards the end of the game in regards to some of their later in the story, at, uh, like, you know, modes and attacks. For sure. That's cool. Anything else have you been playing, or did it? Nah, I think that's, uh, that's it for me, Chief. All right, thank you. Uh, and Yasha, what have you been up to? <laughs> um, mostly League of Legends. I don't play it too too often, but when my squad gets on, uh, mostly my college buddies, we we play as a five man. Sometimes we get steamrolled and stomped, but then other times, you know, I'd be carrying. Or my other friend. He plays okay, big Yasha. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like I mean jungle, so I already gotta deal with the BS. Everybody be flaming. Because if, if the squad's not on and I gotta play with the randos, they just be like, oh, this jungle's so trash. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? You don't even ward. I tell you, you're about to get ganked. <laughs> These terms. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It just, it just so for everyone be me, though. who has no idea what you're talking about when you say ward <laughs> and you say jungle, <laughs> can you explain the League of Legends? The League of Legends My bad. Sauce. So, rundown. The <laughs> objective of the game is to. 
get 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 the nexus to blow up. You gotta blow up your enemies. What is the nexus? That's like main... their home base. Yeah, their home base basically. They got a, like a big mm, crystal that you have to blow up. You have to get it down to like zero, and you win the game. So we have, you know, you get to see your health bars and all that. But we have a mini map, and it's so important to look at this. There's so much information on that. You can see the big objectives, which is barren. It's like this big purple. It's not even a dragon. It's like a I don't know what you call it, but uh, just say a monster or less. Okay. That's on like the the top part of the map, and then the dragon is on the bottom part of the map. You got three lanes, well technically four, but uh, top lane is like we call it the island, where more or okay. less it's a slap fight up there. But whoever wins, this is a skill matchup. Mid lane, it's the shortest lane, that's prevalent to the enemy jungler ganking a lot. Um, and then bot lane, you actually get more help, I would say, because you have support and ADC, um, attack damage character melee down there. Um, but overall, it's, it's super fun to play. The community can be toxic, but it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day to me because I, I enjoy it a lot. Um, i the trenches. <laughs> <laughs> The man, like, I don't know, it's just, I find it to be a lot of fun. I think the only thing that frustrates me in the game, though, is when I give information and then people aren't paying attention and they die to shit that I told you was going to happen, like, a minute beforehand, and I'm just like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, No, that struggle. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll see the enemy jungler by the dragon pit, and I'm spam pinging, danger, danger, or I'll ping enemy missing and it's like they're not paying attention at all and then when he rolls through and claps them i'm just like <laughs> I, I just don't understand so stupid <laughs> I mean, how long have you been playing league of Legends? oh fudge that is a good ass thing. You know what? i got that shit open let me scroll through to see when i pick the first oh, champion it's at least like oh, my eight, God. nine ten years no, it's, mate i don't know if it's been ten maybe like seven seven maybe seven years Maybe, yeah. Actually, let me see, because I, I know Ash, she's like the main, well, she's like one of the main characters of League of Legends, um, as in she's like one of the first champions. They like they even have you play her in the tutorial, that's how like old she is. Jesus. Yeah. Is she one of the ones oh. in the KDA videos? <laughs> No, 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 God, no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right, like, I'm like, all right, ah, the ah. only ones I know are those. <laughs> that's not true. Oh, 2014. Oh, that's uh, when I've got a first Ash. You know, uh, you know oh, arcane, we get there. Oh, oh, arcane, arcane, yeah. oh yeah. So before we go in front of the game, despite all of its criticism, which I know League of Legends has been around for a while, got a lot of hate. Yes. Yeah. Regardless of that hate, got a lot of like you know. <laughs> complaints about toxicity and stuff it's always like a subject of debate it has remained one of the most popular i don't know if it is the most popular but it's definitely one of the most popular video games being played in the gaming space still to this day so clearly there's something working there right them characters yeah, no, are fire and oh, actual messages. character design that's the number one thing and i always hear People of the characters, but someone who has been playing it for yeah. seven years, is that the reason you're still playing it? Uh, nine years, actually, I double-checked. Nine but, years. But, um, Ooh. it's not even the characters for me. I would say for me, it's just, uh... Yeah. yeah, no, they go into so much detail about the characters' backstories. Yeah. Like, the they lore got pages about pages stores. of lore. Yeah. But for me, I think I'm very competitive. <laughs> I'm I'm for the toxicity. Big girl to catch body struggle with a mission. I feel you, y'all. Gonna win. Yeah, like, That's all that matters. Like, right? <laughs> it's all right, then. You kind of get you, you get bragging rights. Like right now, I I just hit plat. I think uh, last last two like two weeks ago, I think. Mm. So the rank. That's like my rank. They, they, they changed it. Yeah. Played. 
They got iron. They're good. Bronze. Yeah, I'm sure. Silver. Oh, they have something lower oh. than bronze, huh? Yeah, That's they just put it in. They need yeah. a porcelain. <laughs> yeah, they might as well, bro. Can I see. I would strive to be a porcelain player in any game. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah, so after plat, then it's diamond, and then I think masters, grandmasters, and challenger. I want to hit Challenger one day, but I don't know. I'm not that great. Challenger? Game. It, it's That's interesting. That's that the last this one. Game. Yeah. Why is it a Challenger? But, like, why isn't a Grandmaster? Do you have any idea? That I don't know. But no, I'll it's tell just kind you of random. Thing. I just thought that. Yeah. That the is Challenger, random. though, you get recalls that look amazing, and it's only for Challenger players. They used to do merch, but then people started um smurfing, and then um <laughs> they started <laughs> to. Uh, Hit a recall? Two what do you mean by recall? What is that? No, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. They, 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 uh, they took away the merch. Like, because once you hit challenge, you actually got a jacket. Oh. Like a real but then life people started jacket? abusing the system. Yeah, you actually got a physical jacket. And so people cool. started abusing the system and then selling the merch to people. And so they're just like, no, uh, we can't do that. So they took it away. I was so upset. I was hurt. I was like, no. <laughs> well, what did they cool. expect? Of course people Yeah, no, the jackets it. looked really cool. That sucked. It was fire. I wanted that. But yeah. You know, um, I want to see what that looks like. You, you could Google it. But yeah, I know me, like, uh, I like Kindred a lot. Um, More or less they're the champion of death but uh i like hey, that it's it. yeah, 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 so. yeah, <laughs> you catch me a bot so that's so edgy you could cut freaking bread and like holy crap you could slice a fresh loaf of bread with that shit yeah <laughs> Yeah, I think her birthday it. just passed not that long ago Ooh, too. So. Wee, bro. I've been playing her for a grip hey yo yo the jacket looks nice Hey, it's not yeah, a right? 50 on eBay right now. What you mean? Put that in the chat so they can see it. Yeah, put that in the chat. I want to see that too. Yeah, eBay, not a 50 right, right now. Dang, that's world champion. Oh, it should be a champ, like a world championship thing. Forget yeah. it. Like, it wasn't just an online like ranking, it. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know yeah. in China, um, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. if you are a challenger, you get discounts when you go out to eat. What? Nice. That's hilarious. Yeah. It's oh, so ingrained as a here. thing. No. It's, that's, that's really crazy. <laughs> that's I, I, I mean, over there. I understand the competitive aspect of games in general, but like, it's a MOBA, or I guess the correct term for it. I've mm -hmm. never understood the popularity of MOBAs as a competitive mm -hmm. game. You know, I've never. I've never even looked at it and been interested, so maybe that's my problem initially, but, like, I've always seen other games, which I, w I would have assumed would have reached the heights that these games have reached. Like, you know, you're getting discounts at places in China and stuff. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, I would expect no, that, that like, from, like, you know, maybe they have a Counter-Strike. I know they have pretty big Counter-Strike tournaments, but, like, FPS games have always been competitive in their nature, right? Like, from a, even way before MOBAs even existed. And like fighting games, which I always thought that should have been the biggest mm -hmm. esport or whatever you want to call it, mm. and it's it never really gotten there. Yeah, they're doing stuff now, but like mm. it's been around for so long, it's never hit the heights that these ga these games have hit. Like MOBAs have exploded. Mm. I wonder what the reason. For Would that you is. think that potentially not could be just completely off mark? Right, I'm just spitballing. Could you think there's possibly the accessibility? Mm. Like, for example, oh, for like, sure. like, 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 League, I don't feel like it's that tech, like, it shouldn't be that stressful to your system. Like, I feel like a lot of people <laughs> play League. So ease of access and technical yeah. execution being low at an entry level? I mean, yeah. I mean, I think like, that, but... That's a lot that goes into the game, though. Uh, like, like, what made you get into it initially, Yasha? Uh, friends, personally. Um, Your friends were playing. I got into Social. it around college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. they were like, oh, you Social should play League of Legends. And, and fun fact, I think back then, uh, it's it's even a sport. 
if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's an esport. It's considered a sport. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I got into it because my friends were into it. And I started playing. Still, I'm kind of trash at ADC, which is like uh, attack damage character. Like, you're like the main DPS uh, in the game, basically. It's, it's, it's a lot, though. You got to manage your wave control to execute killing your enemy properly. You have to... Oh, my God. Like, it's so... Like, every second on the map counts. Like, even when you're pathing, like, from base to, like, going into the jungle and figuring out what you want to do, you have to make sure you execute objective control way, uh, well as well. Like, when the dragon spawns, you have to make sure you can ward properly, clear wards, so that you can take it. You have to also look to see where the enemy jungler is like if they're on the top side of the mat then you can take the dragon safely but then you also have to watch to make sure mid and bot enemies aren't trying to roam to come clap you up so it's a lot that goes <laughs> into it you'd be surprised like the game is you have to think like, i'm sure it's complex you know, like i mean i level. definitely i definitely think that the main thing behind it is just like you can't have a team in a um <laughs> in a like a fighting game right like it's really just you versus somebody else it's a very yeah. it's a very like me versus you kind of thing right but yeah. in league like you have a full team right so not only is there that social aspect to it of you know i can hop on with my friends it's also of like in a competitive way okay who has the best team who has the best strategy you know yeah. so i feel like that's why it's a lot easier for MOBAs and games like that to actually be more mainstream and get more attention because more people are involved. Yeah, definitely yeah. over fighting yeah. games. Yeah, I don't know why over shooters. I mean, I think shooters are pretty popular. I don't know if like oh, they Fortnite are. has ever beaten. Oh, I'm pretty sure it has. It probably Fortnite is probably the most popular game in the world right now. I think Minecraft has, has been. been. Yeah, but Somebody Fortnite was definitely Fortnite out won. there. Yeah. Uh, the, the what was it? He won the tournament. I think he won like a million dollars. I think it was, it was uh, big news. You say a million dollars. I know MOBA tournaments have been going for twenty times that, like twenty years ago, wow. ten years ago. Like that's what I'm saying. I don't know where like that. Those games have blown up like massively yeah. in comparison to other stuff. Like I understand right. you're saying the team aspect and the ease of like execution, the ease of entry, but mm -hmm. like. They have really capitalized on that. Whoever are making those games are doing an excellent job marking them. And... I actually yeah. just looked up about Fortnite. It's not an Olympic eSport. There you go. What? There you go. Really? Yeah. Hey, Holy yo. Shit, what? No, that's what the awesome. get those oh, Holy man, I missed that. Wow. MOBAs ain't Olympic eSports, so they've got them there. Wow. Funny so, story, wait, Mike. so they actually oh. play that at the Olympics? Or? I mean, they will in the future. Yeah, it's, mm. they will. It's been officially uh, recognized as an Olympic eSport. That's pretty crazy. My coworker would be I mean, I gotta right be now. honest. It's, <laughs> being a top-level Fortnite player is hard. Like, well, you I have to give them their respect. Like, do you think it's harder be able than to being build? a top-level fighting game player? I think that it's comparable. Really? I do. Really? Mm. Yeah. Are you... for? So, you're not only just going against one other person. So, that alone makes it harder. Mm. You're going against multiple people. You're going against multiple people, right? So you could be like, let's say your entire team gets killed, right? Just you versus a full team of four. If you're able to build and shoot like back to back in a way that's able to allow you to beat four other high level characters, I mean, high level people, like that's much more impressive than you beating one person, one of you one in a fighting game. Like there's no getting around that because maybe I don't the know. Skill ceiling I was just gonna say, oh, there you can go. Uh, the last thing, I was just gonna say the skill ceiling for Fortnite is a lot higher than um, other shooting games because of the building mechanic. For sure. That's definitely a big aspect. But, um, alright, I mean, anything else on your plate, Yasha? Uh, I'm currently trying to get through my PlayStation 5 games that I have on here that like I've got games carried over from 3 and 4 so God damn I, mm -hmm. I know it's so I hate to hear about it I hate to hear about it I got to I got to finish What's the last one um, you played I'm playing Final Fantasy 
me right now. Which one? But like, oh, the MMR. That one. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Oh, remember the not the, 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 the not the newest expansion though, because I, I gotta I gotta catch up. But um, you do trash. I know. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Uh, but also, I did want to say, going back to your earlier question of that game that we go back to play, uh, Final Fantasy XII is actually one that I constantly go back to. And my stepfather, when we had the PlayStation 2, we were sharing it because he didn't have the money to get his own yet, so we just shared it. I'll never forget, though, I was so close to beating the game. I was at the last boss. This man deleted my save data. Mm. Oh. Yes. I was what game was it again? Final Fantasy XII with both oh. the Airbox and Fran. That's a long game. I, I know. I went. I like. Sure. I kept like starting it over and looking again. Like, okay, maybe, maybe I'm missing it. You know, maybe it's not there. I'm like, this bitch is not <laughs> <this> there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what was the, what was was the memory card low or something? <sighs> That's what he Never. claimed, and then he apologized. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wild, That's bro. Bullshit. I ain't never run out of memory on a motherfucking PlayStation. I've run out before, but it why would you? Oh and you know what? Yeah. You know what makes it messed up though. On PS2, if he deleted it from the memory card, you could see like how long, like the time on it. And yeah. yeah you have to go yeah. Things in order to delete it. Oh yeah. no, nah, Chief. We might have to jump him. <laughs> Unfortunately, out. he's resting in the grave, so he can't do that. But no. he's like, "Fine, I'll but catch yeah. him in the spirit world." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to show the early spirit. <laughs> but yeah, the kid boo his ass, catch him in the other world. Cool. Coming back to the game, I am excited like, for on memories. So. It's awesome. Sixteen looks Street. awesome too. Yeah. Yeah. 16 does look very good. 16 is gonna be my. Oh, game of 16 the year. is gonna be fucking amazing, bro. It doesn't. If they, if they if they live up to half of my expectation for what the game is, still gonna be one of the best games of the year. Mm. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, but uh, let's finish up this little week long thing here with the one and only Larone. What you been doing? Uh, you still haven't went, James. What do you mean? So uh, I forgot. You gotta yeah. go. <laughs> kind of gl- glossed over it all last time, but uh, I feel like, me personally, just all my favorite IP has been specifically attacked just to fuck with me, just because they all turned to <laughs> shit. So, and in order to prepare for, you know, doom coming up and the, the bitter taste of the feet out my mouth, I decided to try to, like, refresh with one of my favorite games, my comfort game what I mentioned earlier, which was Persona 4 Golden. So I started booting that up, going through like, like I said, my like eleventh playthrough. But that's a game that I played the original version on PS2 back when I was, ooh. yeah, I was a kid, very kid back then, hey, very young, twenty years that ago. That was a fat PS2. I had that. Ooh, <laughs> that was that when I saw it on X Play. Oh man, all right, Pete, man. No, well, <laughs> not not well, well. Rest in peace. <laughs> I'll bless. Continue the wrong. Like no more, no more segues. <laughs> but uh, no, it's just it's been nice actually just going back to a game like that. And, like even now, because you know they did it so golden. It's just like the more recent version of the game, which was originally released on the PlayStation Vita, I believe. Oh wow! And the golden was like a remix. Yeah. yeah. So like for those that don't know, like. For every Persona game, like, you'll have the actual, like, title number of games, so, like, Persona 3, Persona 4, Persona 5. But without fail, about a year, year and a half to two years later, they'll come out with an enhanced version of, like, Persona 3 FES, Persona 4 Golden, Persona 5 Royal. It has new characters, about an extra third of the game is added to it. And just, the overall updates, gameplay itself as well, new mechanics, stuff like that. So this is the most recent version of it, and they finally ported it over to console. I think it was earlier this year. Yes, and yeah, I'm sure. I had it downloaded, but I finally got back up and just sitting back, and it was. I think I got the same hype, but that normally did like nice, like I said, to like cleanse the palate a bit before we 
go to the rest of these <laughs> games coming out this year that hopefully come out working and that don't disappoint too much. As you can tell, I'm I'm very pessimistic right now going forward. <laughs> with, Understandably with so. Yeah, it's been rough. It's been rough. <laughs> but hopefully, I feel like I, the optimism me wants to think that all these issues we have with games are just like growing pains. Like you said, they're not easy to make. And the technology just continues to evolve as they're trying to develop these games. So I'm hoping that at some point we can like that could just like plateau a bit. We could just like get a handle. Yeah, we went through a big pandemic too. I'm <laughs> sure. Yeah, that definitely didn't help. That did not help. People couldn't even like go to the job to work on the games. Then, and a lot of these games that are coming out now have been in like development throughout all of that. So it was understandable. Yeah. Oh no, man! Hogwarts came out. I mean, get to that. Yeah. Um, that's actually a news article I got coming up here. But so, Persona Four Golden, last thing you touched. What makes you like it so much? So, to this day, I would personally, in my opinion, say that it has my favorite like story period in any video game. Yeah. For me, yeah, it was the first game where. It was the first game I've ever played that actually had the whole multiple endings, your choices matter, that kind of thing. And Persona, Persona 4 was a, a mystery kind of game. So you were actually trying to find a culprit. And then if you don't pay attention to the story, like, and you're not looking up online, blah, blah, you can pick the wrong culprit and then, you know, just get a bad ending. So it was the first game I was forced to, like, really pay attention to what was happening as well. Yeah, it's going through it. Noise. So it was the mystery aspect. <laughs> I'm sure the characters have been great. I've always heard. Yeah, great characters, good story, great, great music. It was always good. Definitely music. music. Yeah. Music is always fire from Persona. FES is really good yeah. too. I like that one a lot. I had it on PSP. Nice. Yeah, I had that one too. Portable. That was definitely. Yeah, yeah I had that one too. So, Persona's a, a staple. Um, is there anything you're looking forward to, then? Oh, uh, like, like everyone else, I'm looking forward to 16 the most. Final Fantasy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely sipping the Kool-Aid with that one. Is, uh, <laughs> Shout out to you, Zipikino. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Final Fantasy 16 is looking very good. I heard it was looking good, though. Definitely looking the first for one. They showed a big extended gameplay video of it. It looks like a Devil May Cry game, but with the story of for a really good, good Final Fantasy game. So, like, pretty much. sounds like a match made in heaven. It would be interesting to see if it did not work. I feel like it's going to work very well. I feel like it's it, going yeah. to. Too. I feel like they put too much energy into I, it. I no, they can't miss on this. They just missed on Forspoken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that mm-hmm. game definitely had some rough spots and definitely. Went to Development problems on the company behind it. I don't know if they had the, yeah, the, same the right vision 15. to go. They went through 15. I think 15 had some good elements too, right? But like they just couldn't nail what made the good parts of those games good. Were they both done by the same people? Time they had. Yeah. yeah, they were done by the same people. You can kind of mm-hmm. tell because the way the characters move are damn near identical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But 16, so I, I mean, bones. looks a lot more solid, and they're definitely showing it off I feel like more than any other Final Fantasy game at least oh, yeah. mm-hmm. that I remember, and it definitely has released more on schedule than I can remember any Final Fantasy yeah. game releasing. I feel like every Final Fantasy mainline game like, all the way back like 10, 12 13, it was like delayed delayed, mm-hmm. delayed like, it was always doing that, always a Final Fantasy like- they're always so Thirteen you... is, is very special luck. <laughs> it's very special cases. <laughs> Even twelve and ten was like that, dude. Like, I think they had more better. Do you think you might have to better. be because of the people in charge? For like example, like possibly, yeah, the maybe. Of it. And after like they have to meet deadlines with MMO all the time. I think their first real deal delay was what back when in Walker for Final Fantasy fourteen dropped. Yeah, that was. It had to get delayed a couple weeks. Exactly, yeah. and that was. So, like, they have a think good record. Managing people is a highly undervalued skill in game development. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. especially, yeah. I think it was highly undervalued because you know, for a long time, video games you didn't need that many people to make really good video games. Like yeah. for us growing up, yeah. a lot of times the companies were like sixty to like one hundred and fifty, maybe. 300 was like the biggest studio. It was like Bungie at the height of Halo 3. I think had like 300 people. But like, that was a rarity. Games did not have that many. And like, 150 people is still a lot to manage. But now game companies are like a ballooning size to try to get games out faster because it's so much more complex, I'm assuming, and they just need more bodies behind it. And so managing. That meant that many more resources is probably very difficult, and having an experienced hand for it, like, um, what is his name? The director of uh, Yoshi, P. Yoshi, P. Yeah, Yoshi P. Yoshi P. Yoshi P. Who has proven time and time again that he clearly knows what he's doing very well. Mm-hmm. And he knows how to manage people probably better than anyone there, or at least anyone there who's proven themselves. Yeah. It's definitely like there's, um, coming to fruition. It's showing. Talking about what you were talking about, infamous about the like the companies ballooning in size. Yeah, I definitely feel like there's a bit of the um, I forget what they call it, but uh, I'll just call it the uh, the whisper, the whisper uh, cycle. Like you line twenty people up, right? You whisper yeah. something in the first person's ear by the time. Oh, I telephone twentieth person. Yeah. Like, it's a totally different message. Like, communication is hard enough with a small group. When you start having, like, six, seven teams, or like, 50 people each, <coughs> and the communication oh. is damn near non-existent, like, shit's gonna go haywire. It's gonna go, it's gonna, it's gonna go yeah. bad fast. Communication you know, is king. Talking about, like, a $50 million game. You know Probably saying? more than that. Yeah. I We're probably on the hundreds by now. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like you, you playing with a hundred to a hundred and fifty million bucks and mm. no one's talking to each other. It's like <laughs> it's it's a it's a miracle some of these games even get released at all. Yeah. Like Mass Effect Andromeda had pretty much a year of straight development before it came out. Yeah, that's what they didn't know what the fuck they were doing the pr- three prior years and they that's needed the to get something was, out, so yeah. they kinda just like buckled down for that last year and got uh, partially working, you know, like it, it worked. It was ugly and there were a lot of bugs, but you could turn it on and play it to an extent, you know? Yeah. Sure. And kind of like to an extent. what you were talking about earlier, like, you feel like this one got like a little bit more exposure? And it's just like Which coming one? off of like of 16 compared yeah. to the other Final Fantasies. It's mm-hmm. just like when you look at 14, for example, the, the MMO. They have consistent live letters where they go out and explain mm. what they plan to do with the game, etc. So, and they have like over seventy six of these at this point, over since the game came out. It's been out so for like, a long time. A, so a long time. Yeah. Not. Like I remember us playing doing. the beta right. for a Realm right. Reborn. Wow. Mm. So it's like they've been doing the whole like, let me introduce this project to the potential buyers. Like in a good way for like a long time now. Yeah. Like I figure at this point he kind of knows like how to not only present it but also be like okay this is the information you need to know this can be held off to you to play it yourself blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. That just helps like you said with like exposing the game. He's very good at letting people know what to expect. Yeah. Uh, for you know through each live letter like they'll. They'll touch on everything that they that will be done and everything that they kind of want to do in the future. So they're definitely really good at pacing themselves and uh, yeah. just not not getting too ambitious. Mm-hmm. Setting expectations definitely, definitely important. Yeah, yeah. Because if you can control the expectations, you you got a little bit more wiggle room. Not <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of instances of people not. They doing let the that. hype grow wild, and yeah, it, it bit them in the ass. Something fierce. Sure. Um, uh, I mean, anything else, Verona? You did any other games you've touched on? Uh, no. Like I said, I'm just keeping it simple now. I'm trying to 
chill before the summer hits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the last one would be me, and I mean, kind of want to be the last one because honestly, I haven't played anything in the last uh, mm. week or two here. I've been very busy with other stuff, so you know, last thing I probably played is the last thing I talked about on the podcast, which is like Resident Evil Four. You know, I've been over that a bunch, so I don't really touch that again. But uh, I have been going pretty long here, so I want to kind of go into some of this new stuff. I want to cover three articles specifically, or three news topics before we close out here. So um, the first one, pretty good news. I know some of us have played it in here, but um, Hogwarts Legacy has topped 15 million sales and grossed over $1 billion. Nice. Jeez. Oh, yeah. surprise. <laughs> Yo, not surprised at all. They deserve it. They they did a good job. They it's a great the, game. Uh, I want to yeah. buy it. I really do. Yeah, I haven't bought it myself yet. I definitely plan on it though. Definitely go ahead. Yeah, definitely, yeah. like from a, from I just a person got it. who's I not a, a huge of, uh, <laughs> Harry Potter fan, <laughs> like that shit took me by surprise. Like I've seen the movies. I'm like, <laughs> all right. When I played it, I'm like, it definitely put a smile <laughs> on my face like the first 20 minutes playing it i'm like oh so this this how we started off all right <laughs> so i'm playing it and i'm like multiple times i found myself roaming the halls Mm-hmm. Just, I, I totally forgot what my main objective was, but I'm like, yeah. it's, it's so, it's so much stuff to just see. It, it feels it's the best, one of the best alive feeling worlds mm-hmm. in a long time in a game. That like you can go down Lerone? any hall and something's happening. Lerone and I were like halfway through our like max level before we beat the game because we were just oh, doing yeah. so much stuff. We're doing so much extra stuff that. It was, it was literally the meme of being like, do all side missions max level before you even get to like the third or fourth boss. <laughs> like, oh, I have so long. We thought, a, wait, they got clapped. <laughs> it was a hinterlands experience, huh? Oh, no, no, because I, you know, I got out doing something. I was tapped <laughs> like you with the handle. <laughs> I got out eventually. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, okay. But for those who don't know, we're talking about like the beginning area for Dragon Age Inquisition. But you don't have to be in for as long as you end up being stuck over there, Rodney. Look, I didn't <laughs> know that, like, that was my first full Dragon Age experience. Like, I had played a little bit of the other ones here and there, but I never owned any of them. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, so every, I, th- I assumed there was like an open world deal where you travel to certain areas and they'll either transport you to the next area or, you know. Like, like, move you along. I didn't realize that you had to go to, like, a whole war map, and you had to pick locations. <laughs> so I, I, I literally did everything there that the game would possibly allow me to do in the hinterlands before I left, because I'm like, oh, there's more? <laughs> I'm like, I'm 30 hours in, I'm like, oh, did they the game? <laughs> oh, my bad. Mm. Dragon Age Inquisition, great game, by the way. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, Hogwarts Legacy, from perspective here, it's that it sold over 12 million copies and raked in $850 million in sales in the first two weeks, which pretty much just goes to show how much people have been hungry for a good Harry Potter game. Oh, and yeah. The popularity was there ever the one at all before this one? Yeah, I'm the sure movie games. Yeah. On PS4. Yeah, I, I, I never, think some I of the movie games them. were decent, but like, a real... You know, what people want. People want like an RPG to create your character, go to Hogwarts, experience Hogwarts, have the magic of the yeah. movies for yourself. And I mean, I think the fact that they did a pretty good job of nailing that and releasing it, and it wasn't a complete catastrophe at launch, like we said. Mm. And not just, only it, did they easy, nail it, it's easy success, of course. It's going to do well. It's a big IP. People love it. Mm-hmm. They did a good job. But not only did they know it, they did, they, they exceeded the expectations because like i'm a huge i was a huge harry potter fan right i still am and it's just like i'm over here expecting the whole map to just be like the school that you go mm-hmm. out to the town hall with me just like down the street right mm-hmm. and that was those were two pretty big maps then i looked at the world map and i keep scrolling up and down it was like an elder ring experience where you see how big the map <laughs> actually is mm-hmm. now you go to all these other settlements outside the school missions over there and like 
flying around. I was like, okay, I was expecting all of this. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, they definitely did their thing. <laughs> I was I'm upset when it was over. I'm up there. Yeah. Yeah, oh, was game game on touch. Yo, I will say this though. They definitely had a, a free push of publicity, which was good. What do you mean? Uh, For a Hogwarts Legacy, it had a lot of. Oh, you uh, want the controversies? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy how people didn't realize that constantly talking about the game and telling people not to buy it would <laughs> propel Wait, it to success. Com- any publicity is good publicity. That's what they say in marketing. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Definitely gets you around the block. So, you know, the game actually being good, you know, that was the cherry on the top right there. Now, what did you say the previous games they worked on were again? There was some crazy stuff. Um, Wasn't it like a mobile game or something? It, it was something it super minor. Like it yeah, was I like don't think it was a big, big thing. I think it was a uh, very low key bunch of games. It was some kind of like child it game. It was, some, it, it, was a Disney, it was a Disney game. It was oh, Corey in the house. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're not. Wow, you lying. Not. Shut up. You're you're lying. Lying. Exactly. For real. Stop oh, it. We're talking Stop about Corey it. in the house. That game was great, by the way. Don't, don't, don't. That <laughs> I ain't play this. Her people want to know is Avalanche um, software. They're known as parent is Warner Brothers Games. Apparently, they worked for Disney Interactive Studios from about 2005 2016, and they made. I mean, they've touched on a bunch of stuff. They made hits such as the Mortal Kombat Mythologies Sub Zero. Which um anyone who knows what that is is that the is... side scroller? Oh yes, that's a oh, very hell. special game. <laughs> <laughs> oh hell! This is just awful. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a oh, real okay. cool. they've done better stuff. <laughs> they're the responsible. They're, yeah, they're responsible for Tag Cars Three, Ultimate Mortal Kombat Three, back on the nice. Genesis. I think those were like ports. Hannah Montana. Power Juju. Yeah, Hannah Montana game. They did a bunch of Disney <laughs> games. Disney oh yeah, and they went from Disney House Infinity and Cars 3 to Hogwarts Legacy, which I think is... It probably feels That's pretty crazy. freaking Amazing. good working there and getting to do that and it blowing up. And knowing that. Yeah. Hey, you pretty much made it. all you need is a chance. Just need a chance, man. There's a lot of good devs out there. I'm sure they just need that chance. So That's cool to see that they did that. Glad it's doing well. Pretty sick. I hope there's more to come too. Agree. Well, I think DLC. they got some DLC they're working on. Oh, probably for sure. Yeah. Um. All right. So I mean, that's cool. The second thing, which is another article I posted in the uh, chat, there is to a video interview with one Phil Spencer, who is, I believe, the business exec and CEO of Xbox Game Studios. And uh, he basically did, I want to say, like an hour-long video yeah. interview. It was about an hour long, about 41 minutes, whatever. He basically goes on a interview with Kind of Funny Games, which is a pretty popular YouTube channel covering games, media, and stuff. And he probably has the most candid and honest interview with someone in that position that I've seen since, like... Oh. Iwata and um, some of the older Nintendo guys, like, and some of the older Sony guys, even, but like, this this was really cool to see, honestly. Like, um, Redfall, which is a game that just came out recently, was being pushed as a big Xbox exclusive game because currently in this generation, Xbox has not had many reasons to buy their console, really, or to invest in Xbox. There's not a big line of games that they're really pushing, and Redfall was their first, I believe their first $70 release, and it was made by a pretty trusted studio that they have uh, purchased mm-hmm. out, and it was pretty much the first big game they were pushing, and, you know, suffice to say, if you've seen any news about Redfall, it is not doing great, it's not reviewed very great, I believe, it's like, the average score is, like, in the 60s. Yeah, I think it's, like, at 66 or 65. Yeah, and it's being critically panned, it's being, you know, Fan by fans, not doing great, and so they basically had Phil Spencer come on to this interview, and they just straight up talked to him about it, like you know, 
Xbox has only put out a bunch of great games. Redfall has some great. You know, what do you think of that? What do you think where you're going? And he basically took responsibility for most of it, which I was dumbfounded to see because this is a dude who does not he does not need to be on the show. He does not need to respond to these questions. We've seen people in his position just basically ignore this, and, you know, allow blame to fall on the devs and stuff. Which, you know, it's not entirely his fault. This game not being great, and Xbox not being in the greatest position. But the fact that he's willing to step step up in a high position of power in a company like that and accept responsibility, I think, was really cool. He basically was saying, like, yeah, um, I believe it was like a year or two ago, they had like a 12-month plan. They wanted to put out a bunch of games, like I think 10 games, they said, mm-hmm. that were for Xbox, and they did not meet that. And he basically came up and said, yeah, we did not meet that. That's our fault. My fault. And uh, you know, they want to fix it. He says he can't talk about like what's going on in the future, but it, you know he's more optimistic for the future. But you know, right now he is upset. He thinks um, the uh, the in-house testing, you know, and stuff, it it didn't meet what their expectations were for the game. And you know, he said it's partially his fault for not, you know, being more on point with it, not communicating stuff like the game came out 30 FPS. They're gonna add 60 FPS later. And right now, any game that comes out 30 FPS only on a console is being panned by pretty much everyone. That's pretty much I mean, the standard right now. It's pretty unacceptable, not gonna lie. Um, so like you were saying, yeah, that was our fault for not communicating that properly. It was his fault, you know, not saying stuff like that, not exploring the game, telling people what it really is, um, it being in the buggy state that it is, with like, you know, tons of videos online of, like, the AI being a mess, the Graphical glitches being a mess, and other stuff, and he basically went into like great deal about that. And he was, you know, he had some really good interviewers. Oh, forgive me for not remembering their names, but like the kind of funny dudes who were interviewing them were asking the right questions, and they're basically talking about how, yeah, you know, we're gonna ask these questions, but when you introduce a new IP, it's bad when it fails, pretty much for everyone in the industry, because when a new IP fails. You know, it's basically reaffirming the idea of not making the game, continuing the sequel thing, you know, it's just safer. And it's just not good for anyone when it fails. So having the ability to do that and take responsibility for that is really good because that shows more trust in new IP generation and that's future video games. Man, it's got a set of balls on him. I, I, I respect that. Yeah. It's- I've yeah. always seen Phil Spencer as like a dude who seemed like he plays video games, and uh, like he never came across as a dude who's like, "I'm just a business guy." Blah 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 blah. He knows what he's talking about for sure, and he can do the business talk. But like, he seemed like a dude who genuinely played video games and loves video games, and is in the position of power where now he can take control of stuff like that and is trying his best. So it was cool Respect to see. Him. Yeah. Most yeah. people just jump around either <laughs> it's fucked up because they'll either blame the uh they'll blame their fans or mm. they'll blame the dev team or a combination of the two but no one will ever take any any real um they'll never take the blame. yeah they won't they won't take responsibility for it they'll just make excuses like look it is what it is we failed this isn't what i wanted to uh, want it out you know Things happen. I promise I'll do better like that. Like, I'll take that over. Maybe you just don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't tell me <laughs> I don't right. know what I fucking get. Yeah. Like, that's 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 the worst thing you could say. Not only to I anyone, mean, but the people buying your shit. They, he said, you I believe he it. said, that, like they were surprised by the reaction, which I think is probably the first problem. Hmm. If you were surprised by the reaction to the game, if you've seen, if any of you guys have seen the game, if anyone bought this thing, this has seen the game. Somebody was yet like they were. If they were surprised by the reaction, thinking it would get like 80s or 90s or something, uh, they're something either up. there's something Sorry. up here. They might be kissing butt. They might be just in just don't know, <laughs> or like kissing you know maybe there's miscommunication there. But like I, I don't think that was entirely his fault for believing yeah, that. I feel like it had to be a miscommunication because like, something happened. The early they were like, gameplay looked. It yeah, looked like, like alpha. It looked rough. The game looked rough. It, it never looked good to me, on. to be honest. It, yeah. yeah, 
it never really looked good to me either. Like, it never looked like a big, like, I want to play this. This looks really cool. Like, it always just looked like, this looks kind of un <laughs> like, it's like, it's a little, <laughs> little, little more, <laughs> more, little more See, stuff. I'm not going to lie. When I first became aware of the Red Fall situation, I, I wasn't following the game at all, right? Like, complete mm -hmm. just, this was my first exposure to it, was all this <laughs> backlash. But I thought it was, like, you know, just a small indie team making this game. And I'm like, Oh, it's not that bad, but then I realized, you know, what actually went into it. Yeah, that's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's another problem, right? How many, do you guys even know what type of game this is? I was confused. I thought it was like a, it's, it's, a, a looter like shooter, a isn't it? it's a looter shooter, yeah. Like, did you know, oh, sure. like, that there was, like, you knew there was rarity of guns and stuff in the game? You, you knew it was going to be like yeah. Destiny? Yeah. Almost. yeah. I knew what, I knew, I didn't know like in depth but I had a broad understanding. I thought it was supposed to be like a vampire version of like Dead Island or something. You'd run around Yeah, just, I was gonna say yeah like, that's what I thought of someone that like Left 4 Dead like or Dead like Island. Yeah. yeah, I feel like they definitely did not get that message across either what the game was and I think usually when that happens is because they don't know really what type mm -hmm. of game they want to make and they're still trying to figure there's not a out strong it. message behind it that like fails uh, in Comparison to Final Fantasy 16, which now, of course, different developers and everything, but like just the marketing difference. Like, I feel like Redfall was marketed for a similar amount of time, maybe less, maybe more. But like, we barely knew what that game really was when the first time you saw Final Fantasy 16, they came out and said exactly what it was. They said it's going to have action combat and it's going to have a story like old school Final Fantasy games. Like, they knew immediately what it was, they showed gameplay very quickly. And the game they showed recently looks very similar to the game they showed initially. Mm -hmm. Right, strong concept, strong execution, strong marketing, and like Redfall, I feel like it did. It didn't have like maybe it had a good concept, maybe it had a much better concept, but like I feel like it did not meet that concept. It didn't meet it early on, and maybe something there should have changed. Right, like they should have stepped in, maybe talked to people. Yeah. I mean, this is bad times at Xbox in general. I mean, like the whole deal with um, Activision, Activision Blizzard seems like it's gonna fall through because like, what is this the CFA? I think CMA. Block yeah, yeah the that. CMA they blocked it, so like it's probably not gonna get pushed through. Like they're probably not gonna be able to purchase that studio, and then like they have really not had any notable games come out. Like the last. Big title from um like uh Xbox was Halo Infinite in my book and that shit released horribly. I mean It came out with a pretty good affair, but it definitely dropped off the face of Earth very quickly. Yeah, because they weren't able to No, I mean that's the problem. The game was good, right? But they're not going against up against the stuff that they were in like two thousand and eight, right? Like you have to have content coming out for your games. Like yeah. You, if you want to be a live service game, if you want the multiplayer to be free to play and it's going to be competing against Fortnite and Apex Legends and all of these other things that are taking up people's time, and you don't have content coming out constantly, you're destined to fail. I feel like they would have like, been a lot better. I feel like their biggest they thing they got right now is the Game Pass. Release. Game Pretty Pass is like, amazing. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like benefit from the game pass the most are even really the xbox it was it's really pc, PC. Yeah. yeah i mean but, it's definitely a big thing I, th I don't know if they're losing money on it i'm sure they are it's like a big investment for them but like phil spencer was talking about like yeah in, in the next year they're going to show off a lot more games it's going to get a lot more interesting so he seems like he expects more to come. They bought a lot of companies that are really talented developers. You know, the name a few in Exile, Obsidian, uh, you know, the Bethesda, the whole catalog of Bethesda, id, Arcane. Granted, this Arcane game wasn't great, but like, those, games, those companies all have great track records, others they bought too. And like, it's coming around, I think, three years since they've made that purchase, I think. Mm -hmm. So like I oh, think we should cook a little bit. We should be, yeah. And it takes we just saying how long it takes to make games now and stuff. So I think it should be I mean Starfield's coming out, Starfield's gonna be a big one to see if that does well or not. I don't think it's gonna shift the tie to Xbox or anything, but I mean that's well, what's gonna be the, the world of Starfield. 
I think he was saying that too. Interesting, but the gameplay, I I, I wasn't feeling it. Mm. Just one of the teasers they showed off. I feel like probably might change by then. Hey, I'm going to let you know right now. If Starfield is not hitting, bro, it's looking grim for Xbox for a minute. Because that's that's, that's the restrikes, my G. I ain't going to lie to you. Like... (laughs) They 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 swing and a miss too many times. Like, come on. Yeah, I mean, like, that's not gonna be a great look for because there are Xbox. But like, I think if they come out with big other trailers from other studios they have, I think that can keep them in the running for sure. I mean, they're not going anywhere. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't think they're going anywhere, and I wouldn't want them to go anywhere from a uh, competitive standpoint because competition only helps. I mean, shit. If Xbox yeah. went away and it was only Sony and Nintendo, Sony will be fucking us. It will be I've crazy. Seen. They would yeah. not care, bro. They would be doing uh, the most uh, filthy dying things. Dying Xbox possible. is not healthy for the industry at all. No, uh, it's not. But, I mean, I I don't think that we want them to leave the, the console race either because it seems like they're really just shifting towards being a services um, yeah. gaming company at this point. I mean, because they don't even care. Like, PlayStation 5 is beating the shit out of Xbox so bad that Xbox won't even reveal numbers half the time. Like it's like it's like two to one or something like that, or if not more, in terms like, of PS5 versus Xbox. I think it's just because too they're still dealing with what happened with the Xbox One. Yeah, they're still that dealing with generation that. messed them up bad. They were winning in 360 era for sure. Mm-hmm. They, they were had easy. They had it. And hated then, it. But they were ahead of their. They were ahead of the press conference, so they wanted to turn their console into a cable box, which destroyed them. And they, and they wanted a yeah, really camera react. in your house that was always listening. I mean, it was ahead. Of, so and it's fucked up too because they were ahead of their time every single time they released some shit, right? Like, because if you think about it now, my PlayStation Five, I can. I'm not watching cable on it, but. I'm using. I can use Netflix. I can watch Crunchyroll. I can watch all the stuff that I will watch on my TV, my smart TV now, on my PlayStation. You yeah. know, there's also like you know, there's TVs and consoles that are literally listening, waiting for you to activate them. Like, you know, people don't have cameras on all the time, but some people do have cameras that are on all the time. It's like these ideas are good, but they don't. They're just too too soon they're too good they're too smart and i think they're in the wrong industry mm. Mm. i think those are ideas are great for microsoft as a whole tech industry like i feel like they don't realize that xbox is a video like they definitely realize it's a video game thing first i think they're trying to shift away from that without saying it right they want to make it as like a systems as a service or like a cloud yeah. structure as a service they want to sell it to you like they sell Microsoft 365. Yeah, yeah I kind of feel like the Xbox is kind of their vessel in a way to just push Game Pass. Ideally, they'd want to have Game Pass everywhere, like on PlayStation and Nintendo, yeah. if they yeah. really wanted to. But for now, that Xbox is that <laughs> vessel in terms of the console, and then they have it on PC, TV, and whatever else. Is it Game Pass on fucking Nintendo Switch? Am I tweaking? I think you're tweaking. I don't think so. It's something that they put on. I think yeah, gone. I remember hearing something about that, and I was like, yo, what? Yeah, I mean, hmm. I hope Xbox does good. I hope to make a comeback. I'm excited to see what they got in store over the next year. I want to see cool games from those companies, and some of those companies are my favorite companies making games, so I am interested. But, you know, wrapping up here on the last story going for a while now it's pretty crazy uh <laughs> last story is just a game trailer that came out uh, a couple days ago making of this podcast the game is called chrono odyssey i had everybody in this podcast watch the trailer before we started uh if you haven't seen it it's basically being pitched as like the next big um mmo like character action game it's got crazy Unreal Engine 5 graphics. It looks like it plays super smooth. It's got, it looks like it's got a great combat system. It looks like it's got cool boss fights. But uh, this isn't the first time we've been here. Game showing this boss <laughs> in this space. 
Mm -hmm. It's happened a lot, and pretty much all of them have failed miserably. So I was just curious what everyone yeah. thinks about this one. It looks too good but to be at, true. At the end of the day, right, say all of that stuff that you see in the trailer is how it plays and everything, right? Yeah. At, we still got to talk about the elephant in the room, which is going to be the monetization. Like, is it going to be buy and play? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be subscription? Or in worst of all, is it going to be free to play? Like, the monetization of this game is going to be really makes or breaks it. I feel like who, uh, what they're showing now is... Yeah, who did make well, this? I'm not sure, actually. Like, I feel like... Like, I can give them a bit of the doubt. Like, yeah, this is how the game is going to look. It's going to be great, blah, blah, blah. But the monetization of this game is going to be important. And then... How they decide to deal with the inherent pros and cons that come with the MMORPG genre. Uh, I'm saying it's being developed by two companies, NPixel and Gameplex. Hmm. Well, NPixel seems to be. I th it looks like they do. Is this a gotcha game? I guess they might have their hands in gotcha games. Oh, that's that's not a good look. It's, it's yeah, really that's not, not a good, that's not a good right look. <laughs> oh, I see SR and SSR. Yeah, they're in. They're in. They're in. They're in it for gotchas. They got their hands okay. in gotcha shit. Uh, no, what was no. the other company? Uh, Gameplex. Gameplex. It's like I a, something was telling me that. Oh, it just wasn't sitting right. <laughs> and I'm glad my uh glad I looked into it. I was right. Um as far as gameplex, uh ch -ch 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 -ch. Hmm. Is it spelled any specific way or Um yeah. It's spelled kind of weird. Well, the gameplay stuff. Gameplex. Oh, dot Ltd. Dot Ltd. Yeah, I just I'm getting not, this this freaking like workplace environment. I'm getting a yeah. Hong Kong company. Workplace environment. Workplace leadership and culture skills. What the fuck? I mean, they might not be the complete Virtual developer. They might be like out. additional help and stuff. I'm getting like a game truck thing. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, I mean, the big truck game. The if Asian I had to hazard website a guess, that has them. I don't really have. I to. feel I like it yeah. will most likely. I feel like it'll be a little bit of both. I feel like it'll be a subscription based. Hmm. With. Heavy monetization with it as well. Oh, they did Grand Saga. That's a game they worked on. I don't know what that is. I think that's a. I believe that is the gotcha that I. Was yeah, I think that's a game. That's a gotcha. Game. Yeah. So, I mean, we see this a lot with Korean, Japanese, all the Asian, like all the Eastern <laughs> game developers coming out. They make pretty much visually the games. Uh, I, I would say the majority of the Western audience wants to play visually, mm. and also a lot of the time, in terms of gameplay, they make the gameplay we want to play on the stuff. They make it an MMO, and they know it's what people want to play, so they monetize it to Kingdom Come, and they don't really have the same ideals as what a lot of companies here are willing to not do. Like I know that's changing over time here. A lot of companies are getting a lot more vicious with their uh marketing schemes but like a lot definitely. of the eastern stuff has definitely just went for it right out the gate like whatever type of you know free to play stuff they give you it's always tampered with you can buy a premium subscription thing that gives you this this and that that helps you get through this this and that some kind of grind for convention yeah um it's we played filthy. games in mmos where you know in order to progress your character you have to run the risk of destroying equipment and stuff that you need to progress 
terms of the gearing system. I feel like that's definitely going to be a... Uh, yeah, and the way to avoid that. Yeah. They'll have a way to avoid it in Fergus! the game. But <laughs> they're going to gonna sell you some, some way to make it even easier. All right. Yeah. So a lot of the core game components and mechanics are going to be rife with monetization and ways to make money. Um, yeah. That's kind of how gotcha games work. They want you to pay a lot, and they want you to do it frequently. And somehow they oh, make yeah. tons of money because I mean, probably because worlds. they're making the games people want to play visually and you know gameplay wise. So I mean, sometimes they just know that people want to see thickness on the screen, and you know they get people to buy That's games just based off that. Yeah, hey, Laurent, I mean, don't don't you dare! No, <laughs> don't you dare! Hey, yeah, hey, I, mean, I mean, character design, obviously, very uh. You know, attractive character design has always been a thing of Eastern developers. Even Final Fantasy, every game, they always make very attractive characters, right? People always love the way they look a lot of the time. They love the designs. Even when they're more grounded, people usually like them a lot. Um, yeah. The combat, so, I oh, think... They got more soul to them. They got more but, personality, for sure. I think it's just more with the aesthetic that's driven out when you, uh, in that area. <laughs> you realize you gotta sell 50 bucks. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it comes with a price, right? And then the gameplay <laughs> is always, you know, faster action-based games have always been more of a thing of East developers. That's obviously been changing recently, a little bit, obviously. Western devs have been doing stuff like that. But they've always done it. It's what a lot of people like. It's what a lot of people think is fun. And they know that, and so they're trying to monetize the shit out of it. Regardless, I think the game looks phenomenal, if it truly does look like Definitely. that. I'm curious to see yeah. if it's going to perform like that. Maybe that's mm. realistically what they could do on Unreal Engine 5 and, you know, the newer GPUs and stuff. Um, I, I didn't think Black Desert, which is another one of these type of games, which looked very impressive when it came out, would ever make it to a console. And it made it to PS4, even. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, and it, yeah, you know it doesn't look the best. It's still yeah. rough in some places, but yeah. it runs and it you know it works. It's there. I mean, think that's pretty impressive. So I don't think it's out of the ballpark to say that this game could work on a console. I don't know about well, but it could, it could be done. <laughs> it could be there. <laughs> be there. And, it you know, be I mean, there. honestly, all they need is well enough. Yeah, functioning. I think. I think it's it looks very similar to uh we were talking about how I think it looks very similar to the game called Dragon's Dogma, which is an old Capcom game they made a long time ago, about ten years ago now, and the sequel was just announced and it recently. Like Vindictus as well. And it looked like another Korean MMO called Vindictus, which is pretty much super dead now. Also came out like ten years ago, but many people would say if they ever played it. People who did go and play it. Some of the best say, combat it has any, the best combat yeah, in any MMO. Fast paced yeah. action game yeah. I've ever played. Even yeah, like, even compared to Devil May Cry and stuff, its yeah. combat is up there. It's right next to the greats. It's excellently designed combat is crazy. Of course it comes with all the caveats of games in this realm. Oh, free to MMO. play MMO. <laughs> MMO. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. tons of, you know, really grimy monetization tactics and you know, I was always curious if a game like this would come out. Like, I think Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to do this, and I think it's going to blow up because of it. I think it's going to make the things that we that these people in this industry, or not this industry, but this genre, have wanted for a long time without all the nickel and diming and grimy stuff these MMOs do a lot of the time, all these free-to-play MMOs. I think it's going to provide that. Maybe not the constant content updates and stuff like that, but it'll give you a big, chunky experience. You could possibly play with your friends in like an MMO RPG like setting. And you pay that, up front. With excellent combat graphics. And it's gonna have the plus of being able to pay up front and just enjoy it. And I think that's going to go a lot further than a lot of people think. I think that's a genre oh, really that's does. just starving for content <laughs> yeah. that's not in the games of the service model. I think it's really yeah. just, there's nothing out there for that. So 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 sad. <laughs> It's, it's so sad, sad, but it's hopeful too, because you know, some companies I think are going to start realizing that. I think Dragon's Dogma Two being the first, I think Capcom's going to kill that stuff, and it's going to be great. And I think more companies will hopefully realize that going forward. 
I think Final Fantasy 16 is a great example. They realize how much people want that type of gameplay systems now, and how yeah, little it's being more, uh, involved. Yeah, like an involved action combat system. It's, who's making that? Nobody's making that. Capcom and Square Enix, you know. Like it's yeah. when is uh, Elder Blade coming out? That's another one I was interested. Elder Blade is another game coming out. I, I don't know. I'm not sure, but they made by Shift. Twenty twenty three. Yeah, it's coming out this year. Probably. Year. Probably. But, um, and it's crazy because the Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two comes out at the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, I mean that's up in the. I don't think it's coming out at the end of this year. I think it'll come out early next year. You think so? Yeah. Well, I think it'll be like fourth quarter, twenty twenty three. So early. Year, yeah. Early next year. Uh, but I mean, I think that's gonna wrap it up for the podcast, guys. We've been going for even longer than last time. <laughs> <laughs> we're used to it. I already knew uh, it. We have more. Oh, yeah. We've been talking. <laughs> uh, we have, two we more have more people. people. We have to say. Yeah, we have more people. Um, I think going forward, you know, if anybody wants to join, I mean, if we know you'll probably talk to you. If not, we might still talk to you. We'll see. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I just want to give everyone a chance here to shout out anything they have going on. Uh, starting off with Rodney. Got any social media or anything you want to plug? Nothing. <laughs> All right, Eric, you got anything? No. All right, Denzel. Um, you know, catch me at Big Cat Man on uh, YouTube. <laughs> you know, <laughs> might as well. Don't really stream too much, but it's Big Cat Man on Twitch as well. Catch me out here on these streets, man. Shut your ass. <laughs> cool, cool. And Josh, you got anything to start your big career in the uh, internet industry here? Um, Legalizes I do have a Twitch. Legalizes Not a Twitch. What's that Twitch? Plug that Twitch. That it's uh, Princess Kindred, but I probably won't start until like Christmas because I'm trying to get a new setup going on. Cool. Looking yeah, forward to that. Go so crazy. And Lerone. <laughs> Who never has anything to plug at all, am I right? <laughs> yeah, I right. got your paid, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm writing the present series. You can find out more at worldofpresence.com. Those are oh, yeah. books, right? Book series? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Book series coming out. Lerone soon is... to be movies. Soon to be, be TV movies. Yeah, okay. Hope for the best. <laughs> Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say thank you to anybody who's listening this long, especially. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty awesome. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, stick around. Hopefully, we got more coming. Video games are pretty sick. Later. <laughs> yeah. Peace. Yep. Might actually be hitting a little bit of a renaissance. I'm kind of excited. <laughs>